Hello everyone welcome back to Shahi Comics. Once upon a time, a supervillain named Gru Steve Carrail adopted three adorable young girls with the hopes of using them for his nefarious goal of stealing the moon, instead, he began to care for them, and eventually became a proper dad. You all know this story, the Despicable Me franchise now spans four main movies, two spin-offs, several shorts, video games, and theme park attractions, the newest installment in the main storyline, Despicable Me 4, features more of some of the franchise's hallmarks over the top villains, minions while losing track of others. This film series has come a long way since it debuted in 2010, and while some might have grown tired of seeing endless minions running around, I've always been charmed by these movies save for 2015E's Minions, which tried my patience, Despicable Me 4 is far from a failure, providing solid laughs and several heartwarming moments, still, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was missing here even as I had a fun time watching Gru's latest outing. Despicable Me 4 is packed with storylines. Gru's family has grown substantially since the first Despicable Me, and this movie introduces its latest member, Gru J.R.B., the newborn son of the former supervillain and his wife, Lucy Chris and Wieg. A running gag is that Junior isn't very fond of his dad, though Gru tries his very best to win over the baby, however, the domestic bliss is swiftly interrupted by Maxime Lamal Will Ferrell, one of Gru's old classmates who broke out of prison and is coming for Gru. Our hero must pack up his family and move to a safe house, where they're given new identities. The movie's brisk pace keeps the cracks between the various plot threads from showing initially, but upon further inspection, it's clear Despicable Me 4 has so much on its mind, it's forgotten some of what makes the series so delightful. Despicable Me 4 sets up some interesting challenges for its various characters, for example, the spectacled oldest daughter Margot Miranda Cosgrove has to start over at a new middle school with no friends, and the always precious Agnes Madison Sky Polin is having a hard time accepting her new identity because, well, that would mean lying, grew. Meanwhile, is encouraged to act less like himself, as in, be friendly to strangers rather than standoffish. The family dynamic at the core of the franchise seems primed to explore these ideas with ample humor and heart. However, Despicable Me 4 has more plot lines than it can handle. Several minions become superheroes who are parodies of beloved superheroes in an anti villian league experiment, and we follow their first mission. In addition to the threat Maxime poses, Gru finds himself aiding his new neighbor Poppy Joey King in a heist involving his alma mater, a school for villains that seems ripe for further exploration. This story eventually intertwines with the Maxime conflict, but it also pushes away the rest of Gru's family. It ultimately leaves Despicable Me 4 feeling more hollow than previous movies. The franchise was built on Gru's bond with his daughters, but save for a handful of moments, the girls barely get the chance to shine. In fact, Gru spends more time with Poppy, the movie's brisk pace keeps the cracks between the various plot threads from showing initially, but upon further inspection, it's clear Despicable Me 4 has so much on its mind, it's forgotten some of what makes the franchise so delightful. Despicable Me 4 has more of what the franchise is known for. Before the movie is written off as a disappointment though, it's worth noting that Despicable Me 4 has several positives, its ability to stay light on its feet helps keep the excitement going, making for an entertaining viewing experience. Newcomers to the franchise, most notably Farrell and Safa Vergara, as Maxime's accomplice Valentina, fit in perfectly. Though Vergara's character is underused, her diabolical laugh alone makes her role worth it. The action is zippy, enhanced by energetic animation that fits within the franchise's style. Farrell's hammy French accent matches Carell's undefinable Gru inflection, which somehow goes a long way in making Maxime feel like a true nemesis for Gru. Maxime's grand plan is incredibly silly he wants to turn people into cockroaches but the final act raises the stakes by making it personal. The action is zippy, enhanced by energetic animation that fits the franchise's style. The minion subplot is perhaps the most extraneous within Despicable Me 4, but I imagine it'll amuse enough viewers for illumination to contemplate a spin-off. I have no doubt that, should this be a financial success, we will see more of Gru, his family, and the minions. Introducing new villains means there's plenty to sustain this franchise going forward, and the film's ending makes a case for a crossover like Avengers Infinity War, should it continue. I just have to hope it doesn't forget where it came from, and what makes it special, we can get action-packed storylines involving two-dimensional villains anywhere, 
What we can't get are these characters and the relationships they share. Despicable Me 4 releases in theaters on Wednesday, July 3rd. It is 95 minutes long and rated PG for action and rude humor. And we're in the end of the video now and another awesome video I will met you again. Bye guys have a good day.